Cheers, everybody. Welcome to Bourbon on a Budget. We are glad that you are with us tonight, and we're super excited for tonight's episode. Uh, myself, TJ Pittenger, Brendan Sinone, and Ben Cock. Gentlemen, how are you? Good. Hello. What up? Cheers. Hello. We are good. <laughs> One of those nights. <laughs> Thank you for hanging out with us tonight. We've got an exciting episode for you uh, tonight. We're gonna get. We're gonna spend some time with some rise. Brendan's not a big fan of rise, but we're gonna boo, try, and, boo. try and work some rye talk into this episode. Um, we are going to give a salute to the High West Distillery line. They are very rye heavy, and a lot of the things that they do. Of course, we will talk about our pursuits and purposes purposes of course we will talk about our pursuits and purchases and we are let me start that over right. and of course we will get into our pursuits and purchases and update you on what we've had going on there gentlemen what are we drinking tonight uh, i will start off because ben is just committing all sorts of blasphemy on on his end of the computer i because it's one, a rye night, and I'm a team player, and a high west night. I am going with Midwinter Night's Dram from High West Distillery. Uh, I don't particularly like ryes. We'll talk about that. But this rye is finished in a port barrel. It is exquisite. I've talked about it on the show before. I got it from ABC in the vault. It's a second bottle of Midwinter Night Dram that I've uh, – actually, third now that I've procured. It is excellent. I am very much so looking forward to this, even though it's not quite uh, wintry out right now. I will go second because Ben, again, is ruining all the fun and joy and love and peace and every good thing in this world with his choice tonight. So I have four different things. I'll pop it up on the screen right now. So if you're watching this, you can see it. Those are the four bourbons that we, or four whiskeys, because three of them are rise. Um, those are what we're I'm drinking tonight. For those not watching and just listening, I have a High West Double Rye Finished in rum casks, thanks to Kenny's Liquor. I have a Midwinter Night's Dram that Brennan talked about. Mine is Axe 17 one. What did you say yours was? Uh, this latest one I have is was Axe 7 Scene 2. So I got one scene behind. I've got this year's release of Burai, which no longer can you find this in stores. You can find last year's release and older ones in stores. But I had a coworker that was out in Park City, Utah, um, that picked this up for me when it was released. So the 2021 version of that. And then the first High West product I ever bought, this is the actual bottle. I haven't finished it off yet, is High West American Prairie finished in Chardonnay casks, Ooh. Chardonnay barrels um, from Burn Steakhouse. It was a Burn Steakhouse barrel pick. Um, blend them, blend them. You won't do it, blend them. Maybe at the very end, I'll pour a little bit of each yeah. one, but I can't drink four different shots. So um, anyway, Ben, slightly less exciting. What are you drinking tonight? Tonight, I have a Kettle One cucumber-flavored vodka. <laughs> Just kidding. No, baby. Rare breed rye. It's rye night. And I've been searching for this thing for forever. We're drinking it. Rare breed rye. Let's go. Of, of course, you were searching for it. And of course, I am the one that found it for you. So very happy to have found that for you. Um, Me too. Guys, let's <laughs> jump into tonight's episode. Let's talk a little bit of rye. Ben, this is your baby. You are the rye guy of the show. I'm closer to you than I am to Brendan on my liking of rye. I'm a big yeah. rye fan as well, but not quite as much as you are, but still way far away from Brendan Sinone's liking of rye. So Ben, take us through a little bit of rye info here. A lot. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. So if you, and you should be, if you've listened to our old podcast, uh, we talked a little bit about bourbon history. And you know that bourbons start, got their start late 1800s. Now, what if I was to tell you that even before that, a hundred years before that, in the late 1700s, was rye was getting their start. That's right. More heritage, more history. Uh, you may have heard of a gentleman named uh, George Washington, hashtag first president of the United States. Yeah, he was making rye. And the reason why he was making rye is because the English imposed a uh, molasses tariff uh, that was 
primarily used for the production of rum. And so old George Washington himself was like, hey, I have a distillery. We're going to start making some rye. And so rye started way back in the day, pre-revolution days. And so the amount of heritage that bourbon has, rye has a, a tad bit more. Uh, going forward, though, uh, let's talk a little bit about the similarities between bourbon and rye, because in the United States, bourbon and rye are both regulated terms, meaning for bourbon, the mash bill has to be 51% corn, uh, age for four years, um, unless it's stated, you know, that too. Um, similarly, rye has to be 51% rye. Um, now, the mash bill in rye can vary similar to the, the mash bills in uh, in bourbon. Another note uh, of worth noting is that since rye is not only being able to be produced in the U.S. because bourbons only produce the U.S., Canada can produce some some rye. And in Canada, there's actually no regulation on the amount of rye that needs to be included in the mash bill to be called a rye. So if you want to get a traditional rye in the sense that bourbon in America is, try to find something that's been produced in the U.S. You'll know that's at least 51% rye. Um, and that's kind of the way that, why I like rye. It's amazing. It's the same amount of heritage, slightly more. Um, and it started, you know, with George Washington himself. Come at me. No, I will not. But yeah, a little <laughs> bit of a history lesson there. Um, glad that old wooden teeth uh, does it for you, Ben. <laughs> TJ is afraid of getting canceled perpetually. I-, I want you to find a way to get canceled by making fun of George Washington somehow. See if you can get like a colonial cancellation on your resume. A colonial cancellation. I like that. Um, Shameless alliteration. Thank you. Um. No, I I can't and won't. I will fix this, but I almost said, well, every other historical figure from our country is getting canceled too. So like, what's the difference with George Washington? But yeah. I, I'm not, there would be the cancellation. No, nope, edit I'm it out. Take it, it out. out. Take it out. Um, nine o'clock, fix. That's my, <laughs> sure. I, I, I will raise my hand. Uh, canceling. Nine that's, on, that's on me. I baited TJ. You really did. Like, it was just too easy. Like, that's what I wanted to say, but I would never put that in the show. So... Three, two, one. Okay, so that is a little bit about the history of rise. There are different kinds of rise. Brandon, you put some notes together oh, on I some did. different kinds of rise. Let's talk about them. Uh, first off, this midwinter night dram. I always want to say summer night dram. That's what it's named after uh, Shakespeare. I'm fancy and, and a man of, of words and whatnot. This is delicious. This is incredible. It is, however, as I'm pulling out my notes here, uh, in its own category, it's finished in a port barrel. So it's not going to really quite find find into any of these, uh, fit in any of these notes here that we have on the different types of rise. So uh, going off what Ben said, there's heritage in, in rise, uh, and it goes back to colonial times. Uh, what, what's fitting about that and, and why rise were so popular, because uh, think of whiskey in general as a crop, right? Even though it goes through distillation and it's more scientific and then art as well, it's ultimately a crop. What you have available uh, to you is what people over time have always made whiskey out of so you know now currently bourbon is such a big deal because what do we have a crap ton of in america corn we have a bunch of corn uh but when when our founding fathers first got to to uh america uh, to the united states or made it the united states uh they were in you know these colonies on the east coast and uh, especially in the in the northeast ish area uh, rye the crop of rye was uh more prevalent, more popular. So you had uh, different types of rise that, that kind of came from uh, this, this these amount of, of crops and the, and the yield there. Uh, starting off with Pennsylvania rye was probably the most prevalent. It's a Pennsylvania style rye, also known as old. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. No, I will. Mongahalia rye? I don't know. Butcher. One name. more time. One more time. Old Monogahela. Mm. Kissing disease. G A. L H A uh, is characterized. This is from distiller.com. It is characterized by having a mash of just rye and malted barley. It's usually a big whiskey with a chewy mouthfeel. Exquisite mouthfeel. Uh, but it also has a complement of dry rye spice notes, which tame the barrel sweetness. 
Uh, Dad's Hat is an example. That's one that's at ABC quite a bit. They have a port, uh, finished one that's usually on sale. I, I think, guys, I may give that one a try. Uh, next up, Maryland Arise. So, again, we're saying that mid-Atlantic uh, for us in Florida, certainly northeast kind of territory with people. That, that's what's growing there is, is rye, crops of rye. Uh, the primary... Uh, the primary difference between the states uh, of Maryland uh, and Pennsylvania was that corn grew better in Maryland than it did in Pennsylvania. It's coming back to what's readily available to you. Uh, therefore, it was only natural for corn to find its way into the local whiskey. Simply put, corn is an identifier for Maryland style rye. Typically, it has a mash bill of around 60 to 70 percent rye, 20 to 30 percent corn, and 10 to 20 percent malted barley. The corn contributes a bit of sweetness uh, to counter some of the, those dry, uh, harsh rye flavors. Uh, an example of this, and neither of these are, are from Maryland, but the style is in that Maryland style, Old Over, Overholt, which TJ mentioned. I think that was one of his uh, one of his uh, starting pack uh, bourbons, or, yep. or I guess in this case, rye, uh, a good entry-level spicy one. Uh, and one of the few ryes that I actually really enjoy, it's Pikesville rye. It's made in Kentucky. Uh, and I think the reason why I like it, because it's only 51% rye. So it, it Kind of floats the line of like a high rye bourbon almost because there's so much corn in it. Uh, finally, this Indiana rye, and that's going to kind of lead us eventually into the conversation here about High West. Uh, most Indiana ryes come from MGP. Uh, MGP obviously does a ton of, of distribution for sourcing. Uh, they make several rye mash bills, but the most famous one, and it's used in a ton of independent bottles, including some from, from High West, is its 95% rye, 5% barley mash bill. This high rye mash bill, according to distiller.com, was originally designed for blending purposes, but after a series of acquisitions and ownership changes, MGP found themselves sitting atop a large amount of well-aged rye whiskey, then uh, began to sell barrels of this rye whiskey to brands of all sizes. So Billet, oh, excuse, excuse me, Bullet, Dickel uh, are both uh, composed mostly of MGP. Uh, this is kind of considered like a super ramped up, they call it like a supercharged Pennsylvania rye. Uh, that 95.5 mash bill is all over the freaking place. And we're going to talk about it here in a little bit. Yeah. Another important note, when you're talking about uh, like farming in the Northeast, you know, during early colonization, the rye grain was basically grown in the fall as a preventative measure uh, for like winter, like weed growth. So they would basically- A cover crop is what they call it. Right. That. Yeah. Cover it'd be a cover crop. crop. So they would throw it all down or they would grow it in, in the fall but they've had a bunch of rye sitting around. So the way that you preserve stuff back then before refrigeration or whatever, you can only make so much rye bread um, over time. And so they just started distilling it to make it go places. And that's why, or to preserve it. So um, that's why rye had such an early start you know, in, in the early colonization. So just a my, side note. My dog likes to, a couple of neighbors have rye grass that they use as cover crops for the winter time. And he likes to uh, pee specifically on the rye grass and then eat. Uh, that same area. A little fun That'll fact teach there. An extra fun fact. Does that distill the grass? Is that what that process has? Is the ammonia? It, it is that? amazing what it does. Like that whole area grows and it turned into like this big uh, pea corner for dogs. Um, so I don't know if we want to call it distillation, but like a lot of dogs really just kind of uh, mark their har territory. harvested harvested it. It was it was like two feet high by the end of uh, winter. So. I see. Oh, feel free to edit this out if you'd like, or keep it in. Whatever. No, no, we'll keep in Brendan's dog's pee. I think that's uh, something that people want to hear about. Willie's so, pee? Um, so that's all about Rise. Uh, not an exclusive history, an exclusive uh, breakdown, or uh, extensive. Sheesh, use the right word. Um, maybe one day when you guys start paying me more, I'll start using the right words on this podcast. <laughs> that's not an extensive overview of Rye and its history, but all you basically need to know is that Ben likes it and George Washington – uh, the founder of our country basically is the reason that we have it. So, okay. So there's a little bit of a history on rise. Um, again, the two big takeaways from rise are that Ben likes them and Brendan doesn't. So those are your, those are your, and, and I guess the third takeaway, George Washington is, is the reason we have them. So three big takeaways from rise, Ben, what is it about rise? The flavor profiles, the, the no, what is it that makes you like rise? What are those things in a rye that sets them apart for you? So when I'm drinking uh, a lot of straightforward bourbons, the nose and palate, all of that is very, very streamlined. It's very consistent, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, but when I'm drinking rye, the nose and 
taste is so distinct. There's so much more complex flavors. Uh, there's way, I mean, definitely way more spice, but that's kind of with the, the rye, you know, whiskey itself, right? Um, but I feel like when I'm drinking a rye, there is way much, there's consuming more depth to dive into. Um, and you'll kind of notice that like whenever I'm buying a entry level product of rye versus entry level product of, uh, of bourbon, like your rye is going to cost that grain is more expensive than corn is. Um, and I feel like that just carries through to the, the finished product. There's more complexity, more diversity of flavor, um, considering that that mash bill changes, you know, vastly. Uh, from 51 all the way up to like 95. And I know that is very similar to, to bourbons, but they're just more, more diversity in my opinion. Brendan, you are not the biggest rye fan. What is it about rye that turns you off a little bit? Uh, ben is correct that there is more diversity and oftentimes complexity and just difference in rye than, than in bourbon. Uh, certainly has a lot more profiles and directions it can go while still maintaining some bourbon notes, which is why we're talking about it uh, here today because they're too often synonymous. Uh, bourbon and rye are fairly similar. But, but to me, uh, where I get lost on rye is that many of the flavor profiles or the flavors in his profile that it have to, to me are just not enjoyable. When we talk about bourbon, we talk about brown sugar, we talk about cherry, we talk about uh, some chocolatey notes, vanilla, of course, is a huge one in there. Uh, so those are all things that hell sound really pleasant, right? When you start getting into rye, it's and, and not all of them, but uh, you get into rye spread, rye spice. Like I'm not always in the mood for like a rye bread. And sometimes that rye bready note comes through in a rye to me. Uh, brininess comes through pickles. A lot of people say anise or, or licorice come through in, in a rye. Um, and those just aren't flavors that I really tend to, to gravitate, gravitate towards. Like I don't ever buy like a bag of black licorice. It just sounds gross to me. So uh, when I do get a rye that I like, I found that I really do like it. Like Pikesville, I mentioned earlier, I find to be delicious. It, it's probably like a top 20 whiskey for me. I really like it at its price point. Midwinter Night's Dram, absolutely love it. It's spectacular. Uh, so when I do like it, I really do like it uh, and love it. Um, but so often the, the normal generic kind of rye that you can get just have flavors that I don't gravitate towards. And I, I think that's really the the reason why up to this point, I haven't found that I, that I love a lot of rye is just kind of honestly gross sometimes. <laughs> Who wants to eat licorice? I, um, I love black licorice and I think it's because no, my, yeah, no, I, that's, a, that's I, a nightmare. That is a nightmare of a candy. No, at least I do a Twizzlers, do. man, for God's sakes. No, no I, I like black licorice and I know that upsets you guys. I know that that is not something that's easy to hear from, um, anyone that you are close with or care about, but I must tell you guys that my granddad used to feed it to me when I was a kid. And so like, I just acquired a taste for black licorice. Like I just, I, I still like it to this day. I can recognize how funky it is. I, yeah, we'll move on, but, but I do like black licorice. So don't crap on it on this podcast. <laughs> um, speaking of, now, I have no transition for this. We are going to get into our distillery of the night. Our distillery of the night is High West. I've been excited about this for a long time. High West in Park City, Utah. I am super excited to break them down for you guys. And I've got a little bit of info on them. So buckle up. It is High West night. Guys, what's the first thing? I'm going to go into some High West distillery info here in a moment. First thing you think of when I say High West distillery, Ben? Country, horseshoe. That was two things, but thank oh, you. Okay. Brendan, yeah. what about you? The bottle was the very first thing I ever uh, mm. knew about it. It's a really freaking cool bottle. I don't know what to call this, but it's got like the little bubbles in it. It's very like antique-y. Uh, it's got a cool cork. Kind of blown uh, glass. Yeah, yeah, blown glass, I guess is what it would be. So it's a freaking cool bottle. If you can see this here, if you're watching us here on YouTube or the video, however you're watching it, uh, it it's a cool bottle. And then I knew it was in Utah, um, which is obviously a different place to be procuring whiskey from yeah 
Um, yeah, the bottle is awesome. You really can't see it super well, but some of the finishes have like translucent bottles. Uh, yeah, like the store pick ones that you get. That's super unique. I've never seen that until you you showed them to us in the group uh, the group thread. Yeah, and a lot of them when they're barrel picks, they come with a little barrel select uh, coin on the side. So something a little bit different, kind of cool. Um, you know, whatever. They're they're a super cool bottle. Um, for kind of your just standard bottles, we talked about the different bottles between blends and uh, the Willet Pot Still bottle and things like that. Um, for just kind of your standard bottle, it is a it's a pretty neat bottle from the blown glass to the you know the kind of rainbow looking colors on the store picks and the things like that are, are really really cool. So High West Distillery, let's talk about them for just a moment, and then we'll move on. But uh, the first legally licensed distillery in Utah since the end of American Prohibition, um, mostly MGP juice. We talked about this. They distill a lot and they get a lot from MGP. Um, they do have some things that are their own. They do have some some blends that are their own. Um, we're going to be reviewing one later that's at least partially their own on the part two of this episode. So tune into that. Thursday morning it will drop. Um, and they've got some main offerings that they uh, – work through they oh brendan talked about this before we get into that they are in park city utah at the bottom of a ski resort um so definitely if you're into skiing and into drinking probably shouldn't do those at the same time but maybe a good trip to for you out to park city utah they have some main offerings that they work through rendezvous rye is a big one of theirs no longer sourced that is only from like th- that is all them. So rendezvous, rendezvous rye is now a completely high West product. They have American Prairie bourbon. They have double rye, which is something that we'll be reviewing later in the next part of this episode on Thursday. Um, they have a product called campfire, which is a blend of rye scotch and um, bourbon. That sounds really interesting. I'm, I would like, you, yeah, I want you to try that because I, I don't want to ruin anything here. I don't love it. It's pretty scotch heavy to me. And because I don't like scotch, like all I taste in is the scotch, but I'd like for you to try it and oh. be able to kind of get your thoughts on it. You've had it. So you've had it. Okay. Yes. All right. I will. Uh, um, it's often on sale at ABC. So we'll keep an eye on it. So um, they have another product called Burai, which I told you guys I was drinking tonight, at least sampling back and forth on it which is a mix of rye and bourbon, boo rye, B-O-U-R-Y-E, bourbon and rye. Um, Midwinter Nights Dram, which Brent and I are both kind of sipping on, which is their double rye, um, which has been aged longer. So it turned into rendezvous rye, and then it is finished in vermouth barrels. Um, I'm sorry, I'll take that back. It's finished in French oak port barrels. Uh, Yippee Kaye is another product of theirs that has been recently discontinued. I like the Yippie Kaye more than the Midwinter Night's Dram. That one is finished in Syrah and Vermouth barrels. Um, then they have a couple of pre-mixed offerings that they have just come out with here recently, a pre-mixed Old Fashioned and a pre-mixed Manhattan. Um, haven't tried either one of those. I'm not massive on like pre-mixed things, but I feel like I probably should try them because of how much I do like High West. They also have a Rocky Mountain Rye, which is a 16-year-old rye blend, blend of rye whiskeys. Um, super, super difficult to find that hard to get only really a distillery release type thing or secondary market. And then they are big. Like we just talked about on their finishes. I've got a double rye finished in rum cask. I've got a double rye finished in Syrah barrels. I've got a double rye finished in Madeira barrels. I have a American Prairie bourbon, which is finished in Chardonnay barrels. I have an American Prairie bourbon that's finished in Sherry barrels. Uh, We talked about Yippie Kaye and Midwinter Nights Dram both finished in different things. So they're big on their store picks. They're big on their finishes, uh, but they're, they're pretty basic stuff. I don't want to call it basic as a bad thing, but they're pretty standard offerings. Maybe is a better word. They're double rye, their American Prairie bourbon, their rendezvous rye, their boo rye, all really, really good uh, things that you should get into and probably will enjoy. And if you can find those big ones that we talked about, the, the Midwinter Night Stram, the Yippie Kaye, especially now that it's discontinued, you will most likely enjoy those as well. Um, guys, what is your, I just ran through a, a big list of things that they have. Uh, what's your favorite High West offering? I, I'm drinking mine right now. It's the Midwinter Night Dram. Uh, it is 
really unique because uh, you get some of those rye flavors, which again, not my cup of tea or cup of bourbon or whiskey or whatever. Uh, but that port finish adds a nice candied flavor to it. So again, it's super unique. Uh, it's called Midwinter Night Dram because they uh, try to paint the picture of you having it when on a cold night. I think it's perfect for that. Like I could totally see this by a, by a bonfire. Um, but it's refreshing enough, frankly, to have it this time of year too. We're starting to get a little warm here in Florida. So it's really nice to me uh, at about like $85, $80 a bottle. Like it's expensive, but it's special. And again, it's unique. So I think it's totally worth it. Uh, And I've had, I have the brewery as well. Mine's from 2017. It's a really good bottle, uh, especially I think if you're trying to transition into rye, I think this is something that's palatable. I've had the Prairie uh bourbon and i've had the uh the double rye as well from them all their stuff is high quality i will say that everything i've had from them it, even if it's not my my preference is really good tj for a sort for a, for almost everything being sourced which we as bourbon snobs and a lot of people in our um in the bourbon snob community turn their nose up at, at a lot of things that are sourced um High West is fantastic. I am the biggest fan girl of theirs. I love everything I have from them. Minus that campfire again, because it's just scotch heavy and I don't, I don't love scotch. Ben, thoughts on High West. What's your favorite product that they offer? Yeah, I love High West too. I kind of stay with a lot of their more entry-level stuff. I haven't had a majority of their like premier product, the Midwinter's Night, that kind of stuff. Um, so I mostly am drinking like the double rye, American Prairie, um, kind of stuff. But like I, like I said, the, the double rye is, is great. I, I like that. I kind of tend to shy away from a lot of barrel finish product just because I want to dive primarily into just like bourbon or rye before starting the path of bourbon or the barrel finish, like I said. But double rye, that's where, that's where I would probably go. If I'm grabbing one product from High West to just drink, it's going to be a double rye. I've got a tie here. Um, it's between, and I just took a sip of it. It's between this American Prairie bourbon finished in Chardonnay barrels, uh, which is my first bottle I've ever bought from them. It's 66% gone. So it's got about a third of the bottle left. I just took a sip of it and it is just as good as the day I had it uh, for the first time. It is just fantastic and really, really good. The other side, I love the Yippie Kaye. Um, I hate that it's discontinued. I have a bottle over there that I'm looking at that's got maybe 15 to 20, 15% left, and then one more full bottle in the cabinet. And uh, I'm probably going to need to find another one because once that's gone, I'm going to be very, very sad. It is an excellent, excellent uh, rye that I, again, I like it more than the Midwinter's Night's Dram. So I, I'm sad to see it going away. Um, is there a high West product? I've kind of run through all of them. So I apologize for running through everything that they've got, but is there a high West product that you're kind of like looking for that you are keeping your eye out for um, that you would grab immediately if you could get your hands on it or Ben, is it just like the double ride for you? I'll let you go. I'll let you go second. I'll let Brennan go first, but. Uh, yeah. So I don't know if it's one like I'm, You mentioned it. It's the campfire one. I am super intrigued by that. The blend of scotch whiskey along with the bourbon and rye uh, seems like it could be really funky. I know when I've tried doing like my own, my own blends at home, uh, rye often like will take over. Even if you put like just like a little bit into a a bottle, it overwhelms it. And same thing with anything smoky, Uh, smoky takes over too. So um, I mean, it's aged. Well, let's see. I'm looking at their mash bill right now. They have a Scotch whiskey that ranges from 48 years old in there. That seems super young. Uh, they got the 95, five MGP mash bill in there and the 20, uh, 80, 21 too. So that's, that's the double rye that we talked about. And they have a 75% corn whiskey in there as well, the bourbon. Uh, so it's super eclectic in both the, the mash bills that it's adding up. Um, it sounds interesting. I, I could see it be, I would love to try it, I think, before, I buy a whole bottle because it'd be about what I think sixty dollars or so MSRP. So I would love to to try it before I buy a bottle. But uh, color me intrigued. I am I am open to that one if I'm able to try it. And then it's on sale for sixty bucks. Who knows? Maybe it adds its way into the collection. I had it at Whiskey Cake here in Tampa. So I know you guys don't have a Whiskey Cake up there, as far as I'm from 
uh, aware of in Tallahassee, but I know you're coming down in a couple of weeks, a few months. Mm-hmm. Um, so may have to make our little stop by whiskey cake and uh, you can try it there if you don't have a, a local bar that has it on. So Ben, what are you looking for from high West? Yeah, I think if I could walk into a store and pick up Blue Rye or Midwinters, I'd have to just buy a bottle, just one, because Blue Rye is going very limited. It's only going to be in Utah. Um, and Midwinters is very popular, very, you know, well talked about. If I had to choose one of those, I'm probably leaning towards Blue Rye. Um, just as I said, I, I kind of tend to shy away from 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 barrel finish whiskeys. So Blue Rye, I would probably... I'd probably grab a bottle of that regardless. Ben, sorry, real quick, Ben, are you not as, I just judging by the body language here, are you as, you're not as smitten over this, obviously, as TJ is, because he, he's kind of uh, fangirling, like we said, over the uh, the high west. Do you, where do you kind of like, where's that, where does that range in some of like your favorite, uh, some your favorite lines with what high west does? I think high west excels greatly in their, entry product i think if you buy any of their normal everyday available uh whiskeys on the shelf they're all incredible for for what you pay for them i just don't i don't bottle chase their their higher stuff would i grab it if i could walk in into the store and oh midwinter's nice grams here yeah i definitely would just because it's so well reviewed and people do search it out so there's some kind of like weird flex there that I can just have had that bottle. But I just think that their entry level product is so good that I don't need to go and and chase their limited releases. Like it's it's available and it's so good. So my two cents. Yeah, for me, it would either be another bottle of like I just talked about Yippie Kaye um, because it's being discontinued and I love it so much. Or I mean, I'll, I'll pull out the big the big kind of like I wish I could flex with this. There's two different ones. There's a, um, I've seen double rye finished in midwinter night's dram barrels. That sounds amazing to me. Like maybe that would be a good bridge uh, gap to bridge for Ben, because then you're finishing it like in another bourbon barrel. So it's not too, or another rye barrel, I guess. So it's not too crazy. Or how is that get- priced? Is that price between like a double rye and midwinters? Like no, it, yeah, definitely lower than a midwinters, higher than right. A double rye. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, like I've only ever seen on the secondary market, so high. Very so high. yeah, it's it's more than both of those combined. <laughs> yeah, um, the other one would be that sixteen year rye, uh, just because I would like to know what it tastes like. I don't think I would spend the secondary value of whatever that would cost. Um, but if I would happen to be in Park City and it was released, kind of like my coworker got the blue rye. I would definitely pick one up because I'd like to, yeah, I've tasted some, some pretty aged stuff from Buffalo trace and some, you know, like I've had the 15 year pappy. I've had some different things that were pretty highly aged or old, you know, aged for a long time. I'd like to see how high West did that and how that product turned out. So those would be kind of the two that I would go after for sure. Um, Overall, we kind of talked about this, Brendan, you know, you know, I'm fangirling over it. Ben's like a step down from it, but what are your thoughts on High West before we put a bow on this uh, Park City, Utah conversation that we got going right now? I think what they're doing is a quintessential, uh, the type of, so uh, so many distilleries are doing and they are nailing it is sourcing, blending well and integrating their own stuff into a product line uh, while adding brand familiarity, right? Uh, we, I think a lot of people were here in Florida and we're all familiar with, with High West out in Utah, which is pretty freaking cool. Um, but now as they get older, they're starting to integrate their own stuff even more and more into, uh, into their different whiskeys. Uh, they're being very creative. So I have a lot of admiration for what High West is doing. Uh, it's unique. It's tactful. Um, and the quality, again, even if I'm not a huge rye fan myself, as we've noted, I can appreciate that there is quality to what they're doing, that they're sourcing from one of the best in MGP. Uh, the own, their own stuff that they're adding into it is, is really solid. So yeah, it's just, it's good. It, it's one of my favorite non, and again, the bottle is super cool too. It's one of my favorite non-mainstream 
uh, whiskey distilleries here in the United States. And maybe it is at the point now where it's getting pretty mainstream because it is so prevalent. They do a really great job. Uh, kudos to them. Yeah. Big, big high West fans. All right, guys, it is that time again. It is our favorite segment of the week. Before we get into our favorite segment, if you are watching this or listening to this, if you could follow us on all social media, it is Bourbon on a Budget. You can search for on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and thanks to Brendan Sinone, now TikTok. You can search for Bourbon on a Budget. If you're watching or listening, please subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Podcast, wherever you're getting this, please subscribe. Rate us five stars if it's on iTunes. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube and share this with a friend who likes drinking as much as you do, and hopefully they'll enjoy it as well. Favorite segment of the week, pursuits and purchases. Patent pending. Patent pending. Register trademark, copyright, all those things. Guys. Did we pursue anything this week? Did we purchase anything this week? Who wants to go first? Brendan wants to go first. I do, because I, hang on, let me get my story uh, telling pose ready to go. I got a little chiropractic work going on, nice and limber. I pursued and I purchased for TJ, <laughs> not for myself this week. Uh, so, I like to do the South Georgia run here in Tallahassee. You go up 40 minutes uh, across state lines to normally Thomasville, uh, which is a really cool little Southern town and Georgia because state state liquor laws are so different. Uh, they get a lot of different stuff that you can't find in Florida. The pricing can be very different. Uh, like the, the uh, try to think of some of the, there's some really cool bottles that I've gotten up there at like a great price. I've got like a great stag junior there once for $60. Uh, you can get the early times bottle and bomb behind me there almost always ex exclusively at a shop for $25. Well, this time I went a little west to a place called Cairo. Uh, not not Cairo. It's called it's pronounced there Cairo. Shout out it's my about, guy. Shout out my guy Harlan who lives in Cairo. Shout him Egypt. out. Not yeah, it's not there. Egypt uh, because Egypt is, is isn't it Cairo and they say Cairo. It's Cairo. 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 Oh, it's, Cairo. Wait, shout out Cairo. It's, shout out Harlan. And it's Cairo oh, in Georgia. They say it very distinctly there. There's like six people that live there and he's one of them. So that's why I wanted to shout him out. But, but go so ahead. I went up there. I drove through their downtown. Um, one, I Two. saw a radio, I saw a radio shack. I don't know if it was open for business, COVID and, you know, local shopping and whatnot, but there was a radio shack. I kid you not. There across the street from it in their downtown, there was an RCA for music. Uh, I think RCA records. So we are doing some absolute throwbacks. That was really cool. I hit up a couple They're shops. They're still there. probably using VHSs in Cairo, Georgia, if we're no, keeping it a buck. <laughs> so legitimately, about two years ago in Thomasville, there was still a video store there. Oh, uh, Lord. It was not a blockbuster. Uh, there's one blockbuster left. Shout out uh, Last Blockbuster uh, on Netflix right now. It's a kind of fun documentary. If you're an 80s an 80s baby like, like us, even though I'm so much older, apparently, than DJ and Ben. Uh, but anyways, that's part of the fun, right, for pursuing is you go on the – can go to different areas and parts of the way it works in Tallahassee, um, just different parts of the world. But like that, it, it is very different than where you're at in your own backyard. So it's cool to explore. Uh, I got some really good pizza up that way as well. Uh, and, and then I actually found some bourbon for TJ. Actually, technically, since we're on a rye episode here. Some rye. rye. Some yeah. rice. Yep. There was an abundance of Elijah Craig rise. Apparently they're very hard to find in Florida, Georgia. Not, not so difficult. So I got TJ, what, three bottles of it. Um, I bought some ancient age for myself just to buy something and try it. We'll see. It's the same mash bills blends. I have very low expectations. It's very clear, very light, but, uh, but yeah, so I pursued uh, everything I could find up there for myself. The only thing that was worth buying was something for TJ. So I got something for a friend uh, and helped, hook him up with something that he's had a hard time finding and that's the Elijah Craig uh, rise. So there, there you go. And then saw some cool, some cool stuff along the way. Shout out RCA, shout out Radio Shack. If you want to sponsor this podcast, go for it. I think if Radio Shack sponsored us, they'd probably just go out of business. Um, 
I don't know if they have the capital for that. Oh yeah, then, because that would do it. That would, be, that, <laughs> that would be, this would be the nail in the coffin. It's the straw that broke the camel's back as uh, my NBA jams <laughs> used to say back in the day on the Dreamcast. Ben, tell us about your pursuits and purchases this week. Yeah, so uh, I drove around, did some bourbon hunting like everyone typically does on midweek nights, I guess. And I have a lead possibly on a Blanton's at a local Walmart near me. So hopefully I can get one of those at retail because the secondary market doesn't make sense to me. So I'm going to try to grab a bottle of that later this week. I will update you next week. See if I got one. Uh, we'll see. I also, uh, I travel around for, for work. So I went to a couple uh, liquor stores today and I got on the list because this liquor store specifically is you walk in, if it's allocated, they'll ask you, all right, what do you want? And they just put you on a list. And whenever they get it in, they call it. And so I asked the lady, I was like, okay, what's, you know, what's interesting that you guys get? And of course, everyone asks about uh, Eagle Rare and Buffalo and Blanton's. And I'm like, okay, I don't want any of that. And she said that the waiting list for Blanton's right now is two years. And what? So that seems a little <laughs> I, ridiculous. I choked on my wound when I dram. What? Two years for Blanton's? Two years for Blanton's. And she goes, uh, it's about six months for Eagle Rare and then two months for Buffalo Trace. And I was like, that's a bit ridiculous, but whatever. I said, all right, I don't want any of those. What's the list for Larceny Barrel Proof? She goes, Ooh. no one. And I said, oh. Put me first on the list. She goes, I'll call you when we get it in. <laughs> so in theory, within the next week or so, or you know, two or three weeks, right? Uh, I'll be hopefully be able to get grab a bottle of Larceny Barrel Proof, which I've had recently, and it's good. Thanks to so, thanks to how have you had that? Why have you had that? Me. Me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, I've had, these, I've had a few of these. Uh, I've had a few of these high west, and I was like, wait a minute. Did you get one too? <laughs> yeah, I was like, tell me about that pursuit. No, uh, TJ rolled over to my house, and so we tried it, and it was great. Like, and I'm not a big really, really good. Do you yeah. remember what what batch it was? Guys, DJ, what what batch was, batch was it? I don't know, and it's all the way on the okay. side of the room. So I, I think it's I did a a, a comparison. A B or C. Pre- well, that does not. <laughs> it's a letter. Any good. The letter um, is the batch, I guess. I I recently my my friend Elliot, which we should get him on the podcast at, at some point because he is a wild turkey junkie with the amount of cool old wild turkey products he has. I just sit on a shelf. It's ridiculous. Um, like dozens and dozens of wild turkey stuff from like the eighties, maybe even earlier. Uh, to get him to talk about his collection, but. He uh, provided me with the Larceny uh, Barrel Proof B. Uh, I did a head-to-head with A, uh, and A was their first batch. A was exquisite. B apparently won like some like major awards. It's a major award. Uh, hashtag Christmas story. Um, but to me, I had the blind. I thought the A was awesome. It was maple syrup, pancakes. It was legit, uh, and that's on our social media accounts. So check anyway, back to my pursuit and purchases. Sorry. Thanks, Brandon. I Thanks, I appreciate that. that. Was great. Anyway, so I'll be getting a larceny barrel proof at some time in the future at retail. How someone has not gone in there and uh, signed up for that one yet is blows me away. But so that's going to be a good bottle when I grab it. Uh, my purchase this week was a Cooper's Craft 100 proof, and that is part of Brown Foreman's uh, Cooperage. So they make their own barrels and the kind of claim to fame there in Cooper's Craft is they chisel their uh, charred oak barrels. So in theory, you're adding more surface area for the whiskey to kind of interact with and you're kind of maybe express aging it. They don't use that term, but you're going to do that quicker than a non-chisel. And that's the theory behind it. It's pretty good. So uh, those are my purchases and pursuits this week. I was oh. going to talk about my uh, failed uh, pursuit as well, but you know, Ben. No one cares. The, TJ, yeah. what do you got? <laughs> no, no, I want to hear Brendan's failed pursuit. So let's hear it, Brendan. What's going on? Uh, it, I'll make it real quick. Uh, you guys love the Costco runs, right? So uh, I was working on Saturday at about mm, two o'clock, three o'clock. I saw an update on a local whiskey group saying, hey, 
They got Buffalo Trace there right now for like $19. They got Eagle Rare there for $24.99. I told my wife, hey, let's go. The, the post was from three hours earlier. I said, hey, let's go get some gas at the Costco. That's my cover. Go get some gas. But let me go check out the liquor store real quick. Went inside. Kevin, who I'm pretty sure like knows that I snitched on him after I wasn't able to get the uh, George T. Stag because they – they basically hid it from people and just slowly matriculated it out there. I'm pretty sure 20 people did not get the 20 bottles of George C. Stag. I'm on to you, Kevin. I'm on to you, Costco. Hashtag no sponsorship anymore. I don't care for the people. Uh, they were out. Uh, Morgan were and Morgan coming into this? Uh, yeah. <laughs> a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of Morgan and Morgan. Uh, his German Shepherd looks legit, but I haven't seen that German Shepherd in a long time. Uh, hashtag where's the German Shepherd? Hashtag dog ears um so anyways it was a fail it was a a frantic drive to the nearby costco uh and he said they ran out like an hour or so before so what are you gonna do uh 24 25 dollars for an eagle rare would have been extraordinary um my pursuit and purchases took me to the familiar land of Tallahassee, Florida. I met up with Brendan and we did a quick review of Straight Edge Bourbon, which is a really good, I don't want to spoil it, but a really good barbecue bourbon. You should go check out our Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter for that review. It is on all three. Um, After that, I did go to Market Square Liquors in the bustling city of Monticello. Monticello. Monticello, not to be confused with Monticello, um, our, isn't it? Monticello? Yeah, our founding fathers up in Virginia. Yeah, but, it, here in the South, we got Cairo and Cairo, not correct. Monticello, uh, Monticello. It's uh, just a little just, different here in the Panhandle, man. We're, we're lazy with the way we say things. Um, I picked up a bottle of Buffalo Trace Bourbon Creamer, uh, which I've never had before. I am excited for Saturday to roll around so that I can... Put that get in my your, coffee. Get, get your creamer on on a Saturday. Correct. I, I mean, I work from home every day, but I just feel like I shouldn't show up to my Zoom meetings at the first thing, like with Buffalo Trace creamer in. Um, but we'll see. We'll all, see all how sorts of, all sorts of creamer over the weekend. Oh wow! So we will be cracking that this weekend, Ben. Maybe I'll bring you some. That with the pour over coffee. That would be that would be something special. So anyway. Maybe we should find some time to get together this weekend, Ben. We'll see what's going on. But that was my one purchase. Um, what are we previewing this week, guys? We talked about it a little bit earlier. We are previewing High West Double Rye. It's High West Week. It's Rye Week. Double Rye will be previewed. Um, 46% alcohol by volume. You can get this between $32 and $35. Most places you get it on sale. Sometimes you can get a couple dollars cheaper, or if you get ripped off, you can get it up to $40 if you'd like to pay a little extra to your local place. It is a blend of two different rides, which we'll get into on the review, but I am excited to review Double Rye. I know Ben really, really loves Double Rye. He got it at a great price, and I took Brendan to sample this weekend, so we will dive into that. That comes out on Thursday of this week, so check out our review coming soon ben brendan another fantastic episode you have any closing thoughts before we get out of here nope this was fun cheers give me the free cheers cheers